Hello everyone and welcome back. In the last video, we talked about the process of finding the shortest path in an ant colony from a nest to a food source. In this video, we're going to be focusing on the mathematical models developed for this technique. So we'll see how we can mathematically model the process of finding a short path on a graph. So there are two things that we have to focus and there were two main concepts in the last video. The first one was, as you can see here, pheromone. So we have pheromone, of course, and deposit pheromone on the ground, but how do we mathematically model this? That's the first question that we are going to answer. Second one, how do we simulate vaporization, right? Let's say we simulate the pheromone, right, on a graph, how do we then vaporize it based on time, based on duration, based on what? That's the second question. And finally, as you can see over here, we're gonna be talking about the decision-making process. So we will see how we can use, you know, a pheromone and a graph, let's say pheromone, pheromone values or pheromone simulation to make a decision and to increase the probability of choosing a short path. So these are the things that we are going to find out in this video. Let's discuss the details of the mathematical models with a drawn example. We have a cost matrix defining the length of each path on the left hand side as you can see. Now I'm going to also add another matrix to represent the fermon, the amount of fermon on each edge of this graph. So this matrix allows us to store the amount of fermon on each edge of the graph. But the question is, how do we add fermon to each of those paths? There are different methods out there. Some methods deposit the same amount of pheromone regardless of the path found by the ant. For example, if an ant goes this way, they're gonna add one to each of those edges. However, there are also other models that deposit pheromone based on the quality of a path found by an ant. And in fact, there are some species of ants that deposit more pheromones if the food source is big or of high quality. So in this lesson, I show you how to define the pheromone level based on the quality of the path, because it's obviously more promising. For example, if I have an ant that goes on this path, and this path is already very good, I'm going to deposit more pheromone to be able to attract more ants to that path. So yeah, that's what we are going to consider and assume in, in this slides and in this course. Here's the mathematical model used to represent a fermion level on a graph. So basically, delta tau shows the amount of fermion that an ant deposits. But remember, an ant walks on a graph, right? So it goes from one point to the next. And that's exactly why we need those subscripts, right? So I and J shows the edge connecting the node I to the node J. And what is K? K is basically the kth ant. So delta tau I and J and K shows the amount of pheromone deposited by the kth ant on the I, on the edge connecting I, the node I to the node J. And as you can see, it's equal to zero if the ant doesn't go on an edge, right? So for example, if it's one and two and this ant doesn't go there, the pheromone level should be equal to zero. Otherwise, it's equal to one divided by LK. So what is LK? Basically, LK is the length of the path found by the kth ant. And why do we have to divide one by LK? Remember, we are trying to find the shortest path. So the shorter the path, the higher pheromone should be deposited by the ant. So this is exactly what is simulated here. Or I should say, this is exactly what has been mathematically modeled here. So one divided by k. So if I have a path with five edges, you're gonna deposit you know, those five edges with high pheromone or high value here because that's a good path, right? So we have multiple ants, of course. How do we now calculate the amount of pheromon on each edge, of course, we need to add the summation. So summation of k is equal to one to m, where m is equal to the total number of ants, 
delta tau inj k or sub superscript k. So this is where we don't have any evaporation, right? Because we keep adding fermion over time. If you want to simulate the evaporation, you have to add this part to your equation. So one minus rho times the current fermion level plus the new fermion that should be deposited by all ends. So as you can see, we've got a constant here. Rho is a constant that allows you to define the evaporation rate. When rho is equal to zero, there is no evaporation because one minus zero times tau i and j. So we're gonna add, you know, the current, the new amount of fermions to the current every time. When rho is equal to one, then that will be one minus one times tau. That is where the evaporation is at the maximum level or everything, all the fermions evaporates for the next step before it gets to even get deposited next time. So people normally use a number between zero to one, of course. You're gonna choose small one for some problem, big ones for others. It depends on the problem. People normally use evaporation, the equation with the evaporation to be able to simulate what happens in reality. Otherwise, if there is no firm one on the ground, you know, the ants cannot communicate. So let's have a look at a numerical example to better understand the idea behind fermion level and the evaporation rate. So I've got two ants on the left hand side, a purple and a green. So that is the path by the purple and that is a path traveled by the green ant. The first step is to calculate the length of those paths. So L1 is equal to 14, 4 plus 5 plus 4 plus 1. So delta tau 1 i and j is equal to 1 divided by 14. The second one, the second and, L2 is equal to 31. So 4 plus 8 plus 4 plus 15 will give you 31. And delta tau 2 equals to 1 divided by 31. Now how do we add that to our graph, which is called Fermon graph, easy. Look at the green lines without any pepper. That's where I have to add one divided by 31, okay? No pepper color, just green one because the pepper and doesn't walk on these edges of the graph. For, by contrast, these sites where we have only pepper color, we have to add one divided by 14, which we calculated already here. For the other two edges, this one and this one, as you can see on the cost graph, we have both ants travel on them, right? So that's where I have to add one divided by 14 plus one divided by 31. So as you get the idea now, if multiple ants go through on one edge, we're gonna consider or calculate the sum of their pheromones as the final pheromone level of that edge. So I'm using this equation and remember, there is no evaporation. And we're gonna calculate this, so that will be 0 0.07, 0 0.03, and these are 0 0.1, basically. 0. Point, yeah, 1. There we go, so these are the final Fermon values for our Fermon graph. So, a quick question for you. Let's say I've got now an ant here. That's the next time. Let's say I have a red ant starting from the tent. Which path is more likely to be taken? by that ant. One fermion 0 0.7, one 0 0.3, one 0 0.1. Which one has a higher fermion deposited? Of course, this one. So the red, the red ant is more likely to choose this one. Just like the analogy that I talked about it before in one of the videos. Now let's consider the, ferm, the a fermion, an, an initial fermion level. Let's say we have an ant that walk around and deposit one on each of the edges. Now I'm going to consider a fermion, the evaporation, so one minus basic rho times tau, uh, tau i and j, and we're gonna assume that the probab I mean the rho is equal to 0 0.5. That means every time 50% of the current fermion level evaporates. So see what happens now? Remember, these are the initial value, all equal to one. So 0 
times one, that was the current value, plus one divided by 14 coming from the pepper land. This one again, same value. The ones, the diagonals, 0 0.5 times one plus one divided by 13. And the ones at the top and the bottom, 0 0.5 times one plus one divided by 14 plus one divided by 31. So these are the final values that we can consider for this this, this Fairmont graph. So again, still, if you consider this node, this side is more likely, but as you can see, we have more, bigger, bigger numbers for these ones. So to get the idea, evaporation removes a little bit of Fairmont every time and deposit again, depending on, you know, the graphs or the edges that the ants travel so far. This is how we calculate the Fairmont level for each of the ants. Remember, when you want to implement this, this mathematical model, you cannot have graphs. You can visualize them, of course, but you need a matrix. So basically, you need a matrix for your cost. You need a matrix for your Fairmonts as well. So we, eventually, these numbers will be updated to a Fairmont matrix. So that's about it for any combinatorial optimization problem that we want to solve using the ant colony optimization algorithm such pheromones matrices and updating processes should be considered. The next step is to use the pheromones calculated in the first step to choose a path. As discussed before, ants choose a path using uh, probabilities. Here's an equation to simulate this. You can see in this slide that the probability of choosing the edge i and j is equal to tau i and j to the power of alpha multiplied by eta i and j to the power of beta divided by the sum of the same equation in the uh, nominator. Of course, tau is the Fermat level, but what does eta indicate? Basically, eta indicates the quantity of the i, j edge on the graph. With the parameters alpha and beta, we can increase or decrease the impact of tau or eta in the process of decision making. The denominator of this equation as the Fermont and quality of all edges that can be considered from the node i. This probability is calculated for all the edges connected to the current node and is a number in the interval of 0 and 1. If you just want to make a decision based on the Fermont level, then you can remove eta from that equation. So it's up to you. If you want to consider the quality of an edge, then this part should be there. If not, just remove it. And remember, we are interested in the shortest path. So eta i and j is equal to one divided by l i and j. So that means the length of an edge or the cost of an edge indicates how good it is in the process of calculating the probability of choosing that edge. Let's consider another numerical example to better understand the process of calculating the probability of choosing each of the edges on a graph. So I've got two graphs here. This one shows the costs, right, for each edge, and this one shows the Fairmonts. Remember, I'm going to assume that the alpha and beta in these equations are all equal to, are both equal to one. For the simplicity, of course, and normally people assume they are one unless they want to highlight the impact of one of them on calculating their probabilities. But to make it simple, I assume that they are both equal to one. So how do we calculate this, this probability? So let's say we have a yellow ant who is trying to find one of these paths or make a decision which one to pick. So probability of choosing the pond is equal to, so here's the pond, here's the tent, is equal to the the Fermont level, one times one divided by the cost, which is one. So one times one divided by one. That's the nominator. What about the denominator? Basically the denominator is where we need to calculate the same equation for all these edges. For the first one is the pawn already, so the same as the nominator. But this one is for the tree. So look at it, one times one divided by 15, which is its cost. And last one is Fermon, which is one to the car, of course, plus one divided by four. So that gives us 0 0.7595. Let's calculate the probability of choosing the, 
a car. The, the nominator is different now, one divided by one times, one divided by four, but the denominator is identical because you're gonna calculate all of them, right? The equation for all the edges. And finally, this is the probability of choosing the tree. So it's equal to 0 0.05, this one is equal to 0 0.18, roughly. So what does that mean? That means the ant is likely to choose the pond 76%, with a probability of 76%, 5% for the tree, 19% for the car. Why we have very small percentage for the tree? That's obvious, because the weight, the connection weight, or the path is longer than the other. Think about 15 as compared to one and four. And look at the probability of choosing the pond, 76%, right? And that's a good indication of the, you know, the impact of the pheromone and at the same time the cost on calculating the probability of choosing one of the destinations in this example. So see 76%, this pie chart looks very good and shows you you know, how big the probability of choosing the pond is, 76% as compared to 19 and five. Remember, the pheromones level were identical, so the impact were similar on each of these probabilities. To show what happens and how an ant gravitates towards, you know, higher pheromones, in addition to, of course, the cost, a lower cost, I should say, I'm gonna replace this by five, let's say, the initial pheromone value for this edge is equal to five. So what will happen in my equation, so I have now five times one divided by four, five times one divided by four. This one just in the denominator, not the denominator because the pheromone level when you go from the tenth to the three is equal to one. And finally for that one, so what are the probabilities now? There we go, 43% for the pond, 3% for the tree and 54% for the car. They calculate the probability of choosing the car was 90% and now it is equal to 54%, even more than the pond because the pheromone level is five times as compared to the pheromone level of this edge. So this is the idea of this equation and I hope these examples and these visualization, a numerical example I should say, allow you to get your head around you know, these, this, this mathematical model. It's fairly straightforward, but very fascinating and beautiful from my point of perspective. So let's summarize everything. Um, I've got basically both of the graphs. Look at the comparison of the car in both cases from 19% to 54%. So in the mathematical model of the ACO, ants consider both the quality of the path and also the amount of pheromone deposited on you know, that path. So this is how the ACO you know, make a decision and choose one node of each graph you know, when trying to find the lowest cost path or the shortest path in this example, in a graph example. The question that you might be asking now is how do we use these probabilities to choose one of those destinations? Okay, we know that 76% of the times we have to choose the pond, 5% the tree, and 90% the car, but how do we mathematically choose them? Well, the answer is using a technique called roulette wheel. I covered this completely in my course on the genetic algorithm. If you haven't enrolled to that course, that's fine. I briefly take you through the steps of using a roulette wheel. Uh, but if you want to more details, if you want to get into the details and basically implement it, um, I highly recommend you to have a look at the lecture in my course on the genetic algorithm. I think it is in the selection operator of the, the, the genetic algorithm. I believe it is in the selection. So remember we have those probabilities, 0 0.76, 0 0.19, and 0 0.5. The first step is to calculate the cumulative sum. How do we calculate the cumulative sum? Is basically you're gonna add the current probability to each of the ones under, to itself and each of the ones on the right hand side. So 76 plus 19 plus 0 0.5 is equal to basically one. 
Next up, we have 19 plus 0 0.5, so that's gonna give us 0 0.24, and finally, last one, nothing is on the right-hand side, so that's gonna give us 0 0.05. Now, we don't use the probability vectors anymore, we'll be using just the cumulative sum to pick one of them. How do we pick one of the destinations? Well, the answer is by generating a random number between 0 and 1. So we generate a random number in the interval of 0 and 1, if that random number is between 0 0.2 to 1, as you can see in this comparison, then we are going to choose the pond. If it is between 0 0.5 to 0 0.24, we're going to choose the car. Otherwise, we, if, it, if the radius number, if the random number, not the radius number, what am I saying? If the random number is between 0 to 0 0.5, then we are going to choose the tree. So think about the probability of choosing pond between 0 0.2 to 0 0.1. If I generate a random number in that interval uh, between 0 to 1, there are roughly 75, 76% that it goes, it lies in this, in this interval, right, sub-interval. So that's how we simulate the roulette wheel and use it to select one of the destinations in our graph using the ant colony optimization. And that's pretty much everything, guys, for this video. So let's quickly summarize everything. That was a long video. So we started with the mathematical models um, to be able to simulate pheromones on a graph evaporation, and we ended up using those values to calculate the probability of choosing a destination or an edge, basically, on a graph. So I'm going to be using these mathematical equations in my code later on when we, you know, implement the ant colony optimization. That is the end of this video. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.